With countless AI tools popping up left, right and centre, it can be confusing and overwhelming as to know which one to use. ChatGPT is the signature and almost the default option. You likely know about it and use it already. But should we just stick to that or should we explore others? Now I propose you should try Claude.ai too. Now, if you're yet to hear about it, Claude is a relatively new AI assistant that works in many ways like ChatGPT. It was created by Anthropic and by former OpenAI employees. So OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT. And Claude has received over 400 million in funding from Google. So if Microsoft are behind ChatGPT, Google are in many ways behind Claude.ai. Now, I've come to realize that the output from Cloud.ai can be vastly different, and we can use that to our advantage. So today I'd like to share with you some examples of how to leverage them both, when to use each one, and where each truly stands out. Now you may be wondering why does this matter? Well, you know, why can I just not stick to ChatGPT or should I just use Claude and move over to it? Well you could, but this could mean spending more time revising prompts and the output you receive, and less time doing the other important things you need to do in your day. So literally the opposite of the benefits that these tools can offer us, speed and efficiency. So with this all in mind, let's delve into it. The way I'm going to approach this video is we've got both systems loaded up in front of us. I'm logged into both of my accounts. I'm also going to be using the same prompts in two different use cases to see the output and what I personally think of it and where we can see the differences in these two tools. So as you can see, I'm logged into ChatGPT here and I'm gonna be using the GPT-4 model. Bear that in mind, that's part of the paid plan. I'm also on the paid Claude plan, but Claude is free by default. Um, but you can pay for basically, basically additional benefits. And I think it's to do with kind of the, the number of messages you can send and just the, the, the quantity of output that you receive. So in terms of the actual quality of the output, I don't believe it's any different. Whereas with ChatGPT, you do have different models and GPT-4 is considered superior. So let's begin with communications. I think this is one of the best ways that we can leverage AI tools. So what I've got at the top here is an overview of what the prompt is trying to achieve. And I've also got an example, which I'm gonna copy and paste straight into each tool. And we can see live the differences in the output. So in this prompt, the communications prompt, I am, so we're gonna put our persona or role in here. We're going to specify the business or industry, and we're also gonna specify our sector. We're going to write, we're going to suggest what we're writing this for and what stakeholders are included or going to be the recipient and what exactly we, we want to produce. And we're also gonna uh, add an element of tone to ensure that the communications that we receive is kind of aligned to our need. So let's put this into a contextual example. And this is what we're gonna plug in. So I'm gonna pr press Control C and I'm gonna press Control V back into both tools in a second. Uh, actually, I'm gonna get the bottom bit as well. So essentially what we're saying here is we're being really, really specific. And that's because we really want our output to be as effective as it can be the first time round. So what I'm essentially suggesting with this prompt, by the way, is you can use this, you can copy this, and you can use this going forward if you wanted to. I will have a link in the description below uh, that you can that will take you to uh, one of my resources of all my ChatGPT prompts. Um, if you want to get that, that is a paid product, um, but it's not too expensive. And it, I, it's just in the description below. I just thought I'd mention it. You don't have to do that, but you're gonna get things like this included in that. So this is the basis of the prompt. Now this is essentially this prompt with the information plugged in, okay? So we've got that uh, copied. I'm gonna go back into the tool. Now let's first put this into ChatGPT. Just check that it all looks okay. GPT-4, I'm not using any plugins and we're going to hit send message. So the first thing it's done is it's come up with a subject line and it's actually given us, this is quite interesting, all systems go. So it's almost given us a, a it's, it, I like this because actually in a way it kind of incentivizes someone to open it. Because if I read that, I'd be like, you know what, what's, what's, what systems go, what's happening? So I, I actually quite like that. It's a catchy headline for an email. So, hey team, I hope this message finds you well. 
That's nice, it's quite personal. As we approach the end of the year, I wanted to give you a quick update on where we stand with our current project. So what it's done here is bolded it out as well, and it's all that kind of additional information that I've provided it, it's just broken it into different sections, and I really like that. First of all, I'm pleased to report, to report that we've, we're on track and looking good to me till December 20th. So I really like this actually. ChatGPT has actually really impressed me with this. Um, it's very personal, it's, it's simple language, and it makes sense. Well, we're making great progress. And if you were to delve into this, project status is on track due to meet the deadline. Three outstanding risks, but we have a mitigation plan in place. Uh, we've got some upcoming weekly tasks and last week's completed tasks. But if you look at this, it's kind of written in a very clever way. While we're making great progress, there are a few risks on the horizon that we do need to keep an eye on. So this is really good, actually. I'm, I'm really, really impressed by this. A big shout out to the team for the productive discussions around the new pricing structure with the client. So it's actually really, it's really nice. If you read this kind of email, you'd be really, really impressed. So this prompt looks absolutely fantastic for an internal email. And as you, what you could do is you could just li literally update this, you know, depending on your persona, persona or role you want to include, you know, you could put your, uh, I put, I'm a 40 year old male project manager. I'm actually not 40, by the way. I don't know if you can tell by my, my voice, probably not. Um, but, you know, you could put in different things here, um, which will influence how it's written. That, that was the idea behind adding this kind of context. Um, so yeah, this is really, really good. I like the way it's, it's, it's providing praise. You know, it, it's very, very positive tone. Cheers, maybe you want to change that, I don't know. But you could also, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is you could, put, you could tailor this to an external client as well. This is a little bit less formal because it is an internal email. But this looks absolutely fantastic. You could, looks like you could literally copy and paste this. You could then probably in future weeks, you could come into here and you could say, please provide, as an, this is just an example, please provide the next email to the same stakeholders the next week's email. So you could literally save this up. You could then come back in here next week. You could say something like include this, include the same sections, but this time, semicolon, put in last week's completed tasks, put next week's upcoming tasks. You get the idea. So you can actually use this as a template going forward and that will save you a lot of time. You won't have to keep putting this in time and time again. With this in mind, let's go to cloud or Claude. You, you may notice I'm using that interchangeably. I'm not actually sure what the best one is and what to use. But I use both because I think, you know what, it depends what I fancy at the time. So let's paste this in uh, and let's press uh, go. And let's see what happens. Dear team, I hope this Tuesday finds you well. You all well. As we then have you I want to provide an update on Project Gemini. Overall, we remain on track to meet the December deadline. The team has done tremendous work over the past few months to keep us on, on schedule despite some potential roadblocks. We do have a few risks to monitor, competitors potentially entering the market, an economic downturn affecting spending and possible company layoffs. However, we have mitigation plans for each of these. Looking ahead to this week, our focus is on, on obtaining the client's signature for the proposed contract. This will be crucial for locking down scope and pricing. As for last week, we had productive discussions with the client regarding a new pricing structure. I'm proud of the commitment and problem solving abilities this team has demonstrated. So just looking at this first and foremost, a direct comparison. This has broken it down into sections and I like the formatting that it's put in place. This does in a weird kind of way, to me, seem actually a little bit more um, of, of a kind of personal email. This, I love this, I'd probably use this, but there's something about the way this is written that I just feel is a little bit more personal. I don't, if we just look at this sentence here, I hope this message finds you well. I hope this Tuesday finds you all well. Now it sounds a bit like I'm being really pedantic here, but I actually think that that just reads a little bit better. It's a little bit more uh, inclusive. As we approach the end of the year, as we near the end of Q4, it just seems a bit more professional. It seems more um, kind of linguistic jargon. It, it seems more kind of what you'd use in project management. I wanted to provide an update on Project Gemini. I want to give you a quick update on where we stand with our current project. You know, Project Gemini is probably is incorrect. I've not named the name of the project here, but you could quickly update that or you could include that in the prompt. But you see what I mean? I just actually think this, with maybe a little bit of formatting, and you could then tell Claude what you're looking for in terms of formatting. You could say, please break this down by subsections, project status, 
risks, upcoming weekly tasks, and last week's completed tasks, if you wanted to do that. But as I just, if I'm just focused on that first sentence, I just wanted to show you that Claude, I actually think for writing communications is actually a little bit better. And that's because if you just want a little bit of context, Claude is actually much better uh, at kind of writing. It's more designed as a writing tool rather than ChatGPT, which is kind of a, a tool for, for kind of everything, if that makes sense. Claude has been, it's, its specific benefit is in writing. So just bear that in mind, which is why I wanted to show you this example. And if you're not yet using Claude, it's a really good um, tool for writing kind of communication. So I've shown you an example here of an email. You could use this for other types of communications too. It could be something like a newsletter. It could be something like yeah, an internal bulletin, uh, you know, uh, uh, something that you send to the client, you get the idea. Any kind of communications, I really feel that Claude AI is a great tool. Let's look at the next example. And this is for artifacts, okay? So what I've done here is a slightly different prompt. We're using kind of, we're leveraging the, the same, you know, we're priming the tool first and foremost. Um, but this time we are looking for an artifact. In this example, we're looking for a project plan. So again, this is how you would break down the prompt. Again, specify your persona, the kind of business industry you're in, uh, the sector. Um, we're gonna mention the artifact here and we're also going to kind of have reference to the expected result or output. So if I plug all that information in with my example, I've kept it the same just for continuity. Um, I am an experienced for job project manager working for the company for 10 years. I work in the finance industry. I want to create a, so here's where the artifact comes in. I want to create a project plan for a project titled new product launch, include 10 milestones and related subtasks. So I'm being very, very specific here. And here we can test the accuracy of the tool in understanding our prompt. Uh, and it also be interesting um, to see what it comes up with. I've only provided two milestones and that is purposeful. I want to see what the tools do uh, without all 10 milestones as an example. I want to, to know how it kind of interprets it and the, the kind of um, the output that we get. So again, I'm gonna do in control C, let's go back. I'm gonna do a new chat. I don't want to leverage the history of the other chat. I want to start from afresh. So back into chat GPT, we're plugging it in and let's see what we get. So certainly, here's a project plan for the new product launch in the finance industry, including the milestone of obtaining customer signature and nine other milestones with their related subtasks. So maybe I should have been more specific here and put milestones or done these as one um, dash two, if you see what I mean, because I've actually put two milestones in here, but it's only recognized one. Maybe that's a fault on my part, but we'll plug the same thing into Claude and we'll see if that comes up with the same issue as well, because then it's likely my, my fault, let's be honest. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too critical on ChatGPT for that. But let's have a look. Project initiation. Define scope and objectives. Identify key stakeholders. Establish project and roles. Develop initial project budget. Really, really good. I mean, it's all, all you know, milestones you'd expect. Um, Oh, sorry, there's, there's all kind of phases or, or tasks you'd expect within the project initiation phase or milestone, if you like, but it's not project specific. It's very, very vague. Um, this could apply to any project. I, let's keep going because it might it might delve into that. Market research analysis, customer segments, um, conduct SWOT analysis, gather feedback from potential customers. Yeah, still a bit vague. Product design and development, de de define product features and specifications. Okay, this is this is getting a bit better in terms of the specific prompt I gave it and the specific specific specificity sorry define product features and specifications about initial product prototype so this is actually really really good um I'm I'm mean, really impressed with this we could use this as a base uh, a basis for absolute sure we've got summer marketing and promotion strategy which would be important with a product launch uh wouldn't always be well it, it, you know it may be necessary for other projects but not all production and supply chain setup again very important sales and distribution I really like this 10 really relevant milestones and four subtasks for each. And we could delve into this. We could provide future prompts to really refine this further. We could say, I want to include these tasks. I want to do this. I want to do that. You get the idea. This is just from the initial prompt. And here we go. That's pretty, basically ChatGPT just confirming what I've just said. So let's go into Claude and let's do the same thing. So let's copy and paste that in. Again, I don't want to change that. Let's see what Claude does. Here is a draft project plan for the new product launch project with 10 milestones and related subtasks. Now, can you see already, can you see already the difference? 
it's just not as good. So while Claude was fantastic for the communications aspect, for things like project artifacts, in my opinion, this just doesn't compare. We've only got three here um, on each one. So it's, it's less detailed just on a on a numerical aspect. Martin 8 doesn't have, have any subtasks and they just form core projects. It's just a bit wishy-washy. Um, obtain project sponsorship. It's not even... I mean, it's not bad. It really isn't bad. Um, you know, manufacture product. It just, I don't know. It just does, it just seems less, less effective from the outset. Of course, again, we can, we can provide future prompts, but if we just delve into this, I just think this is much better from a first, you know, from a first prompt, if you like. Um, and of course we can really refine this further. You know, the future prompts will be key in really defining this. There is one other thing I'm going to quickly mention about artifacts, and that is the use of plugins. Now, I've not used any plugins for this, but there are plugins uh, in the um, chat GPT plugin store, which you can use for project management. And I do have a video um, which I released recently um, called Task ML. There's a video on this channel about this. I think it's my, the, the, the video I um, published before this one. Now this actually enables you to create projects in ChatGPT entire, entirely. You don't get that with Claude, they don't have any plugins. Um, and that's another string to the bow of ChatGPT and Project Artifacts. Of course, I'm using a project plan as an example. You can check that video out, I'll put a link in the description below for that as well, um, if you wanna see that. And I would recommend that if you really want to build projects and, and track projects within ChatGPT. Um, but what I'm just trying to get at is ChatGPT is always developing, it, it, it for stuff like, artifacts it's fantastic i could have used a roadmap i could use a timeline etc um this is where chat gpt shines and i don't think claude matches it so yeah in these two examples if we go back here artifacts winner chat gpt communications claude dot ai so but you can you can sign up to both of these for free. You can also pay for both of these. I pay for both of these. I'm not suggesting that you do. Um, I'm not affiliated with these companies in any way. Uh, I'm just using them and saving a lot of time use, by by doing so. My recommendation and the the nut you know the overall summary of this video is that use both. Use cloud 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 for communication type pieces. Use. ChatGPT for artifacts. If you've delved in your prompts, it may even be that you can just use ChatGPT in its entirety, or you could even use cloud in its entirety. Both can provide you with a, an output to go from. Both are useful, but as we can see in this video today, they, bar, they are both better for different things, and it's knowing when to use each one. Uh, we can, you can kind of really maximize your time and your productivity and efficiency. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. If you have any questions about either platform or anything on AI and project management, drop them down below. I'd be really, really interested to hear that. I will get back to you. Um, and do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Um, I've got a whole playlist on using AI, ChatGPT, Claude for project management. So you can check that out if you wanted to as well. With all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.